we are uh, called the last route <laughs> at the parking. Oh, they have left there. Nice. Uh, we're trying to find the starting point and very important, I'm recording a hike. I don't know about you, but I'm doing it. Wow. And yeah, so this is the beginning of the hike. So we are uh, full of energy. We, did, uh, we, we drove almost four hours, so very happy to finally start. And uh, then there is a, a moment of regret that comes not long after. But so far, so good. This is the start. So. All right. So we just started having my sandwich while we walk. I think we're on the right path. We're still being a bit conscious about the rain, felt a few drops. So um, I guess we'll see if the next video is <laughs> us smiling and sweating and being tired and having moved forward, or us being desperate and wet and cold and, and thinking about going back to the car and driving back home. So we were saying that I'm not validating the sticks. <laughs> First time I tried the walking sticks, don't know. It, it feels it's more like an uh, it's more an obstacle than, than help, but let's see. All right, so you know also what we should think, talk about. Mm -hmm. We um we're really at the start of our journey of uh, making videos. Okay, you started with a bit more advanced than I did, but we are newbies, and we are learning by trial and error a lot. So I think we can also talk about our our errors and also it can be useful for people that that are just about to start for example one thing i learned um what one error i realized differently from when they teach you how to speak english that you have to fill every void with the uh, uh, transition word i'm not i'm not sure what is the the term for that but you know well these kind of things okay. in this case it's better not to do it <laughs> I'm not sure if I should keep talking, but I will keep talking. It's better not to do it because uh, if someone is talking and the, they don't find the word, so they fill the void, then they eventually find the word and that's it. But in a, in a video, in a podcast, uh, you don't want to hear the person doing uh, uh, mm, all the time. And also you have the possibility to just cut the moment of silence. So what we should learn is to just don't do strange noises and uh, and embrace the silence until you don't find the word. I think this is the idea. I'm not sure it will work. I think it works better on the podcast than on videos. So I have to learn that. And secondly, also very, very important, I have to work on my tone of voice and uh, I don't know how to do that. So I would like to hire a coach. Victor tells me to go on YouTube, but it's easier to hire people. It's also more expensive, so let's see. This is a nice place, so we thought of filming and we we're brainstorming as we usually do in this type of uh, environment. Ah, the, the route is closed. Do we have to turn? No. Okay, we go straight into the property of someone. So we were brainstorming about our uh, side hustle. Victor has plenty of ideas. He's very interested in uh, real estate. I'm a bit, little bit more lost and one interest that I have is running and I was thinking I might enjoy organizing races. So the idea now is to understand, oh, 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 not for overweight people. The idea now is to understand what can be improved in the running organization. So we just finished setting up the tent. And that went by quite easily. And now it is, what time is it? <laughs> 20 to five. Okay, so uh, just after half past four. So what are we gonna do? Are we Are gonna walk a bit more? Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> but let's, let's go to the lake. Yeah. There is a dam mm -hmm. and yeah. Drop everything we don't need. Hope we don't get robbed. <laughs> Hope we can find back the place. Ah, uh, yes, so we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And go for a walk. All right, let's do that. Yeah. Bon, là, je suis à 110. Bien plus proche. Oula. Ah ouais. Ça descend vite. Ah. On n'en a pas, on n'a pas pris le deuxième, hein? Non. Non, on a à peine pris le premier. 
C'est quoi les plus petites branches que j'ai So, big show the world. So, dinner What tonight was supposed to be bolognese. Yeah, show the packaging. That's... Bolognese special with fake meat and lentil pasta. And we ended up with... Soup. Some kind of soup. Also, um, the alcohol burner worked well, but it got empty very quickly. Probably because uh, I brought only half of the windscreen. So we had to resort to finish the cooking on the fire. But um took a, a while to get it started. But now I think uh we have a fire. Mm -hmm. Which was always nice. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be wood camping without fire. Correct. Okay. What time is it today? Five past nine PM. Five past nine. <laughs> I think it's a very good time to go to bed. <laughs> You want a dirty sock? Dirty sock? No, because people. <laughs> uh, I have my book, so time to read. And we're lucky because tonight, or last night, but let's say tonight, is the longest night, no, is the shortest night of the year. So until, I think, 10, maybe 11, we will have light. So I can read my book. No, <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Baci, baci. <laughs> the Sentier de Roche, also known as the Rock Path, is a popular hiking trail located in the Vosges Mountains, a mountain range in northeastern France. The Vosges Mountains are known for the scenic beauty, dense forest, and unique rock formation, making the Sentier de Roche a captivating route for outdoor enthusiasts. The trail follows a well-marked path through a section of the Vosges Mountains, specifically in the area near the town of Le Ovald. It offers hikers the opportunity to experience the rock beauty of the region while navigating through a series of rocky outcrops, cliffs and boulders. The Sentier de Roche presents varying levels of difficulty, with some sections requiring buzzing climbing skills and, ooh, long word, and surefootedness. Surefootedness. <laughs> and being sure with your foot. Hikers can enjoy stunning panoramic views of the surrounding mountains, lush valleys and picturesque villages as they ascend to the higher elevation along the trail. And this we did. As I was saying, while hiking the Sentier de Roche, visitors can encounter unique geological features, such as the Jack Sanson Rocks at the Gulls, a prominent rocky peak. The trail meanders through moss-covered forests, tranquil streams, and cascading waterfalls, offering a rich and diverse natural environment. 
In addition to its natural beauty, the Sentier de Rocher provides opportunities for cultural exploration. Along the trail, hikers may come across historical sites, including ancient ruins, traditional mountain farms, and even remnants of World War I fortifications. And even World War, World War I fortifications! Ciao! Buongiorno! Buongiorno! Morning face after sleeping in the tent. How much? Uh, eight hours, eh? Seven, eight hours, not so bad. And it wasn't too cold. But a bit noisy, birds here wake up early. Um, and we are in a beautiful place. Now we're going, uh, well, slowly back home. We just have something to eat at the Faroberg de Gachne. Which we recommend. The prices were fair and they were very nice. Just going to show the camera so we can remember. Yeah. Okay, so now we can never forget. <laughs> and so now we're walking uh, towards Gachne. We're going to go through the village and uh, continue the walk. Oh, did it. Resume <laughs> hike. Very important. No, and I have to say, uh, the view is amazing, the weather is great, so um, so far so good, and... Oh, but we have a picture, so I'll put the picture in here. We just had a um, homemade yogurt with uh, um, blueberries. blueberries. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if the blueberries are store-bought, but... No, probably they're store-bought, but from a local place here, where they uh, grow them. And, uh, no, uh, overall, a very, very pleasant experience. Uh, How many coffees did you have? Oh yeah, also I was feeling, feeling a bit tired this morning and we had a bit of a mistake at the camp so we were not able to have a coffee so we we stopped here and I had two coffees in a row and um, suddenly like my headache has gone away <laughs> and I'm feeling a bit better which is kind of worrying. <laughs> Maybe a more addictive than I thought. Oh, and and we were just right now listening to Alessandro Barbero, who is one of the most famous podcasts, not a podcaster, but there is a podcast about him in Italian. And uh, so Barbero is an historian and he's one of the historians that became famous also for the general public because he was once invited to the television. It was a program of television about science, history. A very smart uh, guy, journalist, was directing that. He recently died, by the way. And so he is considered, among other things, he's very beloved by the Italian public, like a bit David At Attenberg in, uh, in the UK. And among other things, he discovered Alessandro Barbero because he started to invite him for every uh, episode of his, uh, um, of his television program. Uh, and, and more and more because Alessandro has this way of talking and explaining things that is very, very easy to uh, get caught. He speaks very well. And uh, so after that, he started to be invited to uh, festivals, uh, schools. So he's considered one of the uh, most famous, he's probably the most famous historian in Italy today, at least for the general public. And um, so that's one, probably the most, I think is the Italian podcast with, with the highest number of uh, downloads. And since Victor is trying to learn Italian, uh, we are starting to listen to it together. I listen to all the episodes multiple times, but it's always nice to listen to it again. And uh, we are doing it at speed, I think, 0.75, <laughs> which is interesting for me. Uh, but yeah, so we are, I think, 30 minutes in of an episode now that we started long ago, but always nice. Okay, call de la Schlucht. So we finally finished our trek. Now we are going back to the car. Hopefully we still have the car keys, but I think so. So then this morning, um, we arrived a bit too late for lunch. It was uh, two, about approximately 2.30. But this is also a very touristic place. I mean, I don't know, it's the start of all the tracks and uh, there are only hotels and restaurants so we thought we might as well just uh, having something to drink also because we don't see many people eating at this point 
So having something to drink and uh, refresh ourselves a bit, use the toilet and then take the car and go to some uh, village that we saw on the way there. We're almost finished with lunch. I would have made a video a few minutes ago, but uh, I was so hungry that I jumped on the food. So I'll put um, a little picture of the place where we bought the stuff. And it's a great place uh, where they're, well, great place. Just a cabin where they sell stuff from the farm. And so we're eating a uh, local master cheese, local tom, uh, mountain tom, and then uh, bread. Local. It says it's, uh, they say it's local. And uh, no, this is, uh, oh yeah, and we have a, a blueberry, blueberry, blueberry tart, which is supposed to be the local specialty. And the guy was kind enough to uh, lend us his massive knife so we can have the picnic. And I have to say, after the long hike, this meal is a 10 out of 10, no, it's a 9 out of 10 for me, because I would have loved to have a glass of red wine with this. But other than that, pretty perfect.